Hello, this is Rod from the Alchemist Den, the Esoteric and Hermetic Studies Society. And talking about Hermetic Society, actually Hermetic is going to be the topic of today's video. So what is Hermetic? What is Hermeticism? What is the Hermetica? Sometimes called Hermetica. And uh, so these names, because I've been, uh, these names have been used, misused and abused throughout the centuries, and it's still the case today. So I think it's good to have a foundation about what is what is hermetics uh, what is not hermetics or what is pretending to be hermetics and um, to have an idea about what is what is all about so essentially uh, we refer to hermetic writing and its collection of, of writings that are ranging between the uh, 3 400 BC until the 3 400 AD although we find some writing uh, hermetics related writings throughout the Middle Age. So I would say until the 1200, uh, especially the one referred to uh, alchemy as a, as a subject. So what do they have in common? Uh, that are attributed to the uh, legendary figure of Hermes Trismegistus. These writings are very uh, heterogeneous. Um, they are in several languages. We find um, writings in Greek, we find uh, writings in Coptic, in Latin and Armenian. And they also range throughout a very wide variety of topics. Uh, they're talking about cosmogony, cosmology, uh, the creation of the universe, the creation of man, the, um, about the soul, the soul of the human, the humankind. Um, alchemy, magic, medicine, correspondence. So you'll see it's, it's really a vi wide variety of topics and uh, these writings became pretty much one of the major pillar of the uh, Western esotericism. And we'll find in this writing a lot of syncretism between uh, Egyptian religion and uh, Greek philosophy, Greek religion. Actually, there was even a point in which the uh, Egyptian origin of the Hermetic uh, writings were a little bit doubted. Uh, but then thanks to the uh, finding, the recent finding in 1945, the finding of the, uh, Gnostic, uh, uh, the Gnostic writings in uh, the Nagamadi, the uh, Dead Sea Scroll, were among the uh, many Gnostic Gospels uh, they were also found um, different uh, writing related to hermetic pointing, hermetic pointing the origin of hermetic right uh, to Egypt. So the value of Egypt in these writings were uh, rightfully uh, re-established thanks to the discovery of the uh, Dead Sea Scroll, uh, the Nagamadi Scrolls in 1945. So the first question would be actually who was Hermes Trismegistus? We know that Hermes Trismegistus is uh, coming from the Egyptian god Thoth. And um, <clears throat> when um, Egypt was Hellenized, we know that the, the Greek and the Roman didn't really like uh, the depiction of the Egyptian gods having half men, half um, animal, so some with anthropomorphic shape mixed with animal shape. So most of the pantheon was replaced with um, the images coming from the uh, Greek tradition. So the god Thoth was supposed to be the god of um, uh, writing, the god of culture, uh, the god of science, and of course the god of occult sciences as well, were perfectly matching the uh, Greek god Hermes. So the, from that point on, uh, Thoth and Hermes became pretty much almost the same, the same figure. And Thoth, uh, well, the three times, the Trismegistus actually means three times, three times great. And uh, this epithet is actually a typical Egyptian way to describe the gods. In fact, Thoth was described as two times great uh, in around between the 1000 to the 300 BC and then it became three times great after it was associated with Hermes 
in the Ptolemaic period and uh, that from that point on, from the three times great of the Ptolemaic period, uh, was derived the Trismegist Trismegistus that we carried throughout all the Roman time and when we have it as of today. So, but beside being uh, God, beside being Toth, Hermes, what is actually, who is actually this Hermes Trismegistus? Well, it could have been said to be a legendary prophet who lived at the time of Moses, he could have been like the, actually even the teacher of Moses or the teacher of Pythagoras. Could have been an Egyptian priest. Um, but most likely we're talking about a lot of people, a group of different group of people signing under the name of uh, Hermes Trismegistus. Trismegistus. And um, most likely this group of people, they reached the peak. They have mostly flourished around the Alexandrian time. Uh, before the Muslim invasion. So commonly the Hermetic writings are um, divided into two main categories. One is called uh, Philosophical Hermetica and the other one is called Technical Hermetica. This definition is uh, coming from the later studies and um, not actually 100% uh, correct or, or accepted because um, it's difficult to separate the technical part from the philosophical part. So many people argue that these texts should be studied as a, as a whole, but nevertheless, for the sake of understanding, we will be talking about um, philosophical hermetica and technical hermetica. So starting from the uh, philosophical hermetica first, uh, let me show you this is the the Philosophical Hermetica is um, the group of texts that are more mostly concerned with cosmogony, uh, with the uh, creation of the universe, the creation of mankind, uh, the relation of what is the soul of the man, and uh, are essentially 18 um, writings collected into, into something called the Corpus Hermeticum. This is the Italian version. Um, inside here uh, we have the, uh, some in Greek, some in Coptic, and uh, one in, in, in Latin. So as I mentioned, these texts are uh, mainly on philosophical, theological uh, content. While, on the other hand, the technical Hermetica, which among them the most famous one is the uh, Greek-Egyptian magical papyri, the PGM, for which we uh, there is actually a video about it. Um, in other texts, much more practical, where we have subject like alchemy, we have subject like magic, uh, we have subject like astrology, astronomy. There is even um, writing about the forces of nature, correspondences. Um, so all this part that unfortunately didn't receive the same uh, serious study from the academic world as much as the uh, philosophical hermetica. So the philosophical hermetica are mainly written in a form of, of dialogue, where has Mr. Smegistus uh, teaches uh, through a dialogue to his students, to his pupils, mainly the two figures that mostly recur in the, in the dialogues are uh, his son Tat and uh, the figure of Asclepius. Uh, this is the usual pattern, although there is uh, two major exceptions in, in the philosophical hermetical group of texts. And one is in the first, the Poimander, where the Poimander is actually uh, the divine intellect, or known as the Naos, um, that is uh, teaching actually to Hermes Trismegistus himself. And then we have uh, another fragment from the Subian uh, collection, Called the Corecosmo or the pupil of the cosmos, where uh, we find um, Isis, the goddess Isis, teaching to her son uh, Horus. All the rest pretty much is always Hermes Trismegistus teaching to Asclepius Ammon and, and his son Tat. The very interesting part about this writing is that, um, well, first of all, they are um, very often inconsistent with each other and also sometimes contradictory. So this leaves room to think whether um, beside being written by different group of people, so maybe group different people with a different understanding of the uh, hermetic uh, principles, 
uh, or it could also be an um, initiatory process. We know that many times in, in history, which happened also in the uh, Asian religion, sometimes the teaching seems to be contradictory because they are addressed to a different level of initiation of people. So we'll have a first initiatory level while the teaching are in certain way easier to understand and then progresses throughout the um, progression also of the student and comparing the uh, teaching sometimes they may seem uh, contradictory while actually is the teaching itself that is comprehended in a, in a different way. But unfortunately as of today we do not have documents that can um, actually uh, tell us exactly what, if and what was the initiatory process related to the Hermetic tradition compared to what we, have, we know about the Lucina mystery or other kind of mysteries that we know exactly that there was an uh, initiatory process there but for the Hermetic tradition we don't have this kind of information yet. Again, hermetics is something that is keeps changing. This is the exciting part about it because the more findings are discovered, the more um, ideas and, and, and uh, theses about what hermetic is, is actually may change. But let's focus on what we have as of today, just to give a very general idea uh, about the content of the Philosophical Hermeticum, uh, the creation. The Philosophical Hermetica is it's also can be compared to, to the Bible in somehow uh, when he's talking about the fall of uh, the fall of creations essentially for uh, the general understanding of Hermetic there is a nous, there is a divine uh, intellect that speaks and, and, and creates some kind of nous demiurge or the craftsman the craftsman mind um, the demiurge, the same demiurge that uh, we find in the Gnostics and the same demiurge that we find in the Timaeus of, uh, Timaeus of uh, Plato. So this demiurge creates then uh, the seven governors, who are, uh, which are the seven planets. And then from the seven planets, the um, four elements and the material world is uh, created. In this uh, creation process, Humans are also created in the image of, of God. Uh, they do have a creative power, so they are kind of they are telling us that uh, mankind is divine, is very close to God, and he has um, um, creation power. But what happens is that man gets too attached, get fall in love with nature, so fall in love with the material world and forgets his divine nature. So the whole uh, concept of the Philosophical Hermetica is how to teach mankind to rediscover um, the man's divine nature and therefore uh, ascend back through the spheres and uh, reunite with the, um, reunite toward the now, so toward the divine divine mind. So it's essentially a path to some kind of salvation, let's call it, let's put it this way. And this is one concept that um, we'll find later on in the development of uh, what we see in, in the evolution of uh, ceremonial magic or the mystic, when the mysticism uh, start to get attached to uh, the magical tradition. And this is one of the um, major part related to uh, ceremonial magic that actually was taken uh, from, from Eliphas Levi. They uh, taking, try to take man, the nature of man, back to his divine origin. Other important concept that we find in the, um, within the Philosophical Hermetica is the concept of uh, man as a, a macrocosm. So we have the microcosm and the microcosm. Um, and so everything connects to everything else through what we call sympathia. Sympathia, from where again we have a magical concept of sympathy, so that everything connects to everything else, therefore, touching something will produce an effect on something else. And uh, then we have the concept of uh, universe as a living being, 
uh, with the famous all is one and we here we take uh, back Parmenides and Topan so all is one everything is in, in the universe is uh, is a one is is one thing and everything is connected everything is a, is is one living being and uh, finally of course the soul of uh, humans can ascend as we mentioned earlier can ascend through the spheres and unite back to the uh, divine nous the divine mind so one very important thing to know is uh, that the philosophical hermetica that came to us through Ficino's translation of the 1500, is a, a philosophical hermetica that has been purged and um, adjusted from the early Orthodox Christians in uh, Byzantium, in Constantinople, as the Christians were trying to find um, a lineage, a much older lineage to, to justify their religion, were trying to use uh, hermetic writings that were much older than the Christian religion in order to uh, give them a more credibility for the, the Christian ideas. And um, so when uh, Alexandria fell um, under the, the Muslim, the writings actually had two routes. One, one route went up to Constantinople, which was the last part of the Roman Empire, and one part was taken back uh, by the Muslim back to uh, the, uh, their countries. So the part that went through Constantinople, which is the philosophical hermetica that came later into Europe and then was translated by, by uh, Marsilio Ficino in, in, in Latin and made basically all the, uh, where the Renaissance started based on the Hermetic Principle, but this part was already uh, filtered, purged, changed by the hands of uh, the uh, Byzantine, by the hand of the uh, Christians, early Christian in, in Constantinople. So uh, it's difficult to see, uh, a real, to have a real picture of the Hermetic writings because for sure a lot of pagan related parts, a lot of things that were not really uh, matching or justifying somehow the Christian thought may have been uh, removed. And uh, talking about, talking about this, this document, this writing, so as we say, one after the Muslim invasion, one went up to Constantinople, the other one fell in the hands of the Muslim and I would have to say the Muslim even made very good use to, uh, to that because they started to work on this document and that's where we have uh, uh, magic documents, alchemy, uh, astronomy and astrology that are, uh, they were translated and used and developed in uh, the Muslim country and then also for those writings came back to Europe in um, Arabic language like the Picatrix and, and other similar similar writings. And these take us to uh, talk about the technical hermetica. But before moving there, actually, I would like to read a sentence from the, still from the philosophical hermetica, still from one of the most important dialogue, which is called the Asclepius, uh, where Hermes says, Do you know, Asclepius, that Egypt is an image of heaven, or, so to speak more exactly, in Egypt, all operations of power which rule and work in heaven have been transferred to earth. So I think this sentence is very relevant because it uh, brings us to the very famous concept, uh, maybe the most famous concept of uh, Hermeticism, which is as above, so below. Not only being the most famous concept, but also is the beginning of the uh, Emerald Table or we should say emerald tables, because there were so many actually emerald tables throughout, throughout the history. And this emerald table um, is very cryptic, uh, like almost like an oracle kind of form, and uh, supposedly it contains the heart of uh, the hermetic teachings and the formula, the hidden formula uh, to uh, produce uh, the philosopher's stone. Now, one of the oldest documents where we find the emerald table is in Arabic, uh, is from the 9th century AD, and is attributed to uh, the magician, the Apollonius of Tiana. This emerald table, as we said, there's so many versions, and 
all the way throughout the history uh, it gave of course uh, a highway to uh, the development of alchemy all the way until Newton so we have one of the uh, most recent uh, copy of the emerald table uh, by the hand of uh, Newton another very important uh, document related to alchemy is a writing called uh, Isis the prophetess to her son Horus where in this writing supposedly the angel Amnael is revealing um, to Isis the secret of uh, alchemy that is summarized into uh, wheat uh, engenders wheat uh, man begat man and so gold breeds gold this is one one of the most famous uh, sentence in the um, technical hermetical especially refer to the science of alchemy but again as I mentioned we find so many other uh, topics so many other subjects in the technical hermetica especially related to astronomy astrology one of the most important related to astrology is the uh, Liber Hermetis which comes in two books uh, uh, the book one is uh, talking about the houses, the nature of the planet, the deacons, uh, the zodiacal stars, and the book two uh, talks about the fixed stars and the aspects. So these books are really from the, the foundation of the Western uh, astrology. Other concept that we find um, still in the technical hermetica, the uh, relation between the deacons and the human body in another very important writing called the Holy Book of Hermes to Asclepius. So these writings and, and this teaching had really a major influence, a paramount influence into development of the Western esotericism along with the Chaldean oracles um, and influenced really major big names like like, uh, like Giordano Bruno, of course, is one of the most famous hermetic philosopher, but scientists like Newton, uh, Paracelsus, which is considered one of the father of the modern medicine, um, and alchemy, of course, we had uh, influence on John Dee and influence on artists as well, like uh, we have Dante in his uh, Divine Comedy, we have William Shakespeare, um, and along with this also the influence to uh, the uh, quote-unquote secret societies like the Rosicrucian, uh, the Martinist, uh, the, the Societas Rosicruciana in, in Anglia which were part of the uh, Freemason and actually then later uh, give birth also to the, uh, to the Golden Dawn, which was actually called uh, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. And uh, the Freemason, of course, that retained part of the esoteric, the esoteric part of the uh, Hermetic teachings. And then finally, uh, in the last words, I would like also to specify what is not hermetica and or what is pseudo hermetica because i hear it so many times and then uh, internet is flooded with these uh, famous kibalion and when people talk about the kibalion talk about the seven principle of the kibalion as it was actually hermetic teachings now i hope that if you've been following this video and you compare uh, what is actually in the kibalion you may see that they cannot really be called hermetic so this book is not much to do with hermetic science or it's not much to do with hermetic philosophy it still of course um, has some important information inside but i would not say that the kibalion has anything um, or very little related to the hermetic teachings or hermetic thought and this brings us to the end of this uh, video I hope I didn't put in too many information at once in this in this video and I hope you had a little bit of a better understanding of what really when we talk about hermetics or hermetica or hermetic thinking what we are actually talking about. So thanks again uh, as usual to stay uh, with me today and um, see you soon. Goodbye.